Well, I hope uh, many of you are, are doing uh, your best to try to keep up with uh, the Bible reading uh, that we're doing as a church. And I know through this year, uh, God has really stopped me in a couple of places uh, and really worked hard um, you know, on me in, in a couple of different areas. And uh, some of these areas were things that uh, Pastor Dameron preached on, the one, one in particular uh, where I stopped. A lot of times I always have to bring a book or something up to, you know, as a prop here. This is my study Bible. It's, it's, I get a lot of commentary out of here and some other sources. Uh, and on this particular verse out of Job 13, 15, uh, where, where it said, uh, where Job said uh, when he was going through his trials, though the Lord slay me, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And I was, you know, they kind of just stopped me right there. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And, um, you know, it's like, do I trust in the Lord that much? You know, we, I go through a hard time. Do I trust in the Lord? We oftentimes will ask for uh, the Lord to give us faith. And we think, oh, if I ask the Lord to give us faith, I'm going to have some, some trial that I'm going to have to go through. But uh, when... Job says this, we, we know he was going through some serious trials, and he already had demonstrated uh, that he had faith. Uh, he lost all of his children, lost all of his possessions. He had nothing left. Uh, it so much got to the point where um, that uh, he was sitting in just a heap of ashes, scraping the boils off that he had on his all over his body from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot with just pieces of pottery, just scraping it off, trying to get some relief from that. He had nothing left. Uh, his friends were accusing him of, you know, being, oh, you deserve this. You're getting what you deserve. And, you know, so even so, his wife came and said, yeah, um, why don't you just curse God and die? So, you know, I think of this and it's like, Wow. You know, I've never gone through any trial like that. Nothing that even uh, comes close. And, you know, you know, and I, do I believe uh, like Job does? And Job, you know, some of the commentaries, or one of the commentaries kind of explains it away and says, well, you know, Job knew, you know, he could die and, and he was accepted that. But, but that's not the, the meaning of, the, of the, the, the words. It's uh, though he slay me, though he kill me, if he, God... Wants me dead, I'll still trust in him. And it's like, okay, well, wow, that was, um, that really took me a long time to get through and just kind of uh, spoke to me there. Another one, and I'll try to quickly go through this, it's uh, just another one that really spoke to me was uh, Psalm 61, um, and it's just uh, a prayer of, of David's, and it's, it says, Hear my cry, O God, attendant to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And I didn't, you know, it's like I've ran through that, you know, countless times. But I went into the to the commentary again. That was I went to Spurgeon with the uh, uh, the treasury of of David there, and uh, he explained it real well. He's like he you know, lives in, well, lived in, in England, and they have those cliffs there. And he said there were often times when uh, uh, mariners would uh, be shipwrecked off of the cliffs, and they can't get to land because the, the rock is just too high. And um, what he said, he said there was a, a pastor on the coast that... Um, that carved some stairs into the rocks so that when the people were shipwrecked, they said it happened, he said it happened very frequently that ships would be wrecked there. And this pastor just built some uh, stairs into the side of the rock so a wrecked uh, you know, crew or the mariner could get to that rock up there. And it's like, wow, you know, because it says here, uh, when my heart is overwhelmed, and the whole idea of that is, is being under a flood, being, being flooded over, um, and that rock is there, we know who the rock is, and uh, it said, uh, for the, the next verse says, for thou hast been a shelter for me, and then um, 
you know, uh, Spurgeon would say, well, what we need to do is go back to those times when the Lord has uh, uh, delivered us from those, um, those the, the past, the times in the past. We need to look to those times in the past to know that he's going he's gonna, to uh, protect us in the future, be our strength, uh, be our, uh, um, you know, strong tower in that case. And it just, uh, I don't have any, like, shipwreck stories to look back to have never been shipwrecked or anything. So I could say, oh, you know, God delivered me from that. But I do have one real, uh, just a, a real quick time that uh, that's God's used in my life a number of times. And it just, I was 21 years old in the Marines, and uh, it was, I was on the ocean. We were on the ocean, and this was early spring as the water was ice cold, um, and I was with a guy, he said, hey, who wants to go swimming? Nobody was swimming in Southern California in, in April. It was, it was just freezing. But this was, guy was just a grunt. And he said, ah, I said, I'll go with you. So he swims out, uh, just starts swimming out. Um, and I said, well, I, I'll just keep up with him. I swam behind him and kept swimming and kept swimming and kept swimming. And then pretty soon it's like, wow, this guy, he, you know, he's, doing a lot better than you know, I can. So I just turned around uh, to go back. And when I turned around, I could see nothing but just water as far as I could see in every different direction. And I was like, okay, this, you know. But then I just saw peeping over the horizon the top of a, of a crane that had been working on the building. And I remembered seeing that crane when, I was, uh, when we were at the, at the beach, the, the crane where it was. And I said, okay, so I'll just swim towards that, use that as my, uh, as my reference. And as I'm swimming, I don't know, it seemed like twice as long as what it took me to go out there. And I'm still swimming, and I can't see anything, just the tip of that crane still. And it's like, I got to the point, it's like, I'm going to drown. I'm, I'm done. And it's like the whole idea of panic. I, you know, I started to, to panic. And then it's like, no, God's in control. You know, I was a new Christian at that time. So God's in control. And so I just said, I'll just swim until, you know, whatever. So I still had that, uh, that reference. I still had that crane. So as I kept swimming and kept swimming, and it's like, it never seemed like it got any closer, but I just kept swimming towards that. And what's, I couldn't tell you how long. I have no frame of reference in my mind on how long. But as I'm swimming, I get a handful of sand. And it's like, so here I stand up. I can still only see just the top of that crane, but then I stand up and I can see the whole beach. I can see everything. And I'm, I got a handful and I'm up to my knees in water. So it was like, you know, how long ago, you know, how much, you know, was I worrying about something? And I wasn't even in any danger at all at that point. And I don't even know the truth is when I was way out there, maybe I could have stood up then. I never tried, never did. I just was going to panic and I could have been drowning in four feet of water, I, you know, you know, but God takes me back to that. It's like, I'm in control. The world is so small. It's, it's, it's um, you know, it's all in my hand. And it just, we need to go back to those times and, and God can, um, you know, use those times and past to help us get through any, any storm, stormy times we have now. We just have to trust him.